For us to set up a diet and talk about macronutrients and to manipulate that diet over time, first we have to have somewhere to start from. This is what's called establishing maintenance calories. For us to know what someone, for us to figure out what we need to do to have someone lose weight or gain weight, we have to know what it takes for them to maintain weight. And there are a few ways we can figure this out. Traditionally, we would use a BMR equation and then multiply that by a, an activity multiplier to estimate someone's energy requirements. Now this is useful, but not as useful as we'd like because we're not working with averages, we're working with individuals. And unfortunately, there's a broad range of individual variants, as we just discussed, in terms of calorie expenditure. So using body weight and activity alone is often not the best way to do it. However, if you do find yourself in a situation where you have to estimate calories on the fly and you can't work with real data, let's talk about the best way we can do it given the population of physique competitors. First, you want to multiply body weight by 10 if it's in pounds or 22 if it's in kilograms. This is a rough estimation of BMR. Then you can use an activity multiplier. Now, as you can see, this activity multiplier assumes that the person is doing three to six days of weightlifting. Many times bodybuilders are confused or athletes in general are confused when they read the activity multipliers in traditional equations because the number of the amount of training changes as they go from sedentary to very active. But in reality, you can have a bodybuilder who might be training four days a week who's completely sedentary. Maybe they're a programmer in their profession and maybe they just don't like to do many things outside of the house. Likewise, you can have a bodybuilder who's a construction worker and happens to enjoy taking hikes in their free time. They're both doing the same amount of training, however their activity levels outside of training are vastly different. So for this reason, you can tell that these different categories all assume three to six days of weightlifting and they go from all the way to 1.3 to 2.2 as a multiplier. Now that's a pretty broad range and you can see there's overlap between these different categories. That's by design. This is to account for the fact that there's a large amount of individual variability and an individual may not be able to accurately assess their level of sedentariness. So you have to have some amount of error and amount of assumption and a big kind of wiggle room as far as what the actual calories are. Let's use an example. If we had a 92 kilogram male who has a sedentary lifestyle and trains three to six days per week and we use the multiplier of 1.3 to 1.6, we can see that results in a range of anywhere between about 2,600 calories all the way up to 3,200 calories. Now you might be thinking, wow, that's a huge range. That's not very useful. That's a 600 calorie spread. In fact, if the person's actual total energy expenditure was 2600 and you put them on 3200, they'd start gaining weight at a relatively quick pace. Likewise, if their energy expenditure was 3200 and you put them on 2600, that would actually be a cut diet for them. So there's an inherent limitation when you calculate someone's uh, total energy expenditure based on these equations. You know it's probably in this range, but it could be a large, a, large broad, a large broad range that won't be as useful as actually getting real data. So how do we get actual real data? A much better way to determine maintenance, an ideal way of doing it compared to the okay way of doing it of just using a broad calculator, is to actually use tracking data. What I recommend to you as a coach is that before you start actually having your client prep, they have an intake period where at least one to two weeks, if not longer, they're tracking calories without changing anything and they're tracking their body weight. Not only is this a useful way of getting some baseline data, it also shows you how skilled they are at tracking their nutrition and tracking their body weight. If they really struggle to track their body weight and track their calories for a two week period, it's unlikely that they're going to do well during contest prep. And this means that you need to spend more time with them before officially starting contest prep, teaching them the ropes of flexible dieting. So let's talk about this a bit more. First, what you need is at least two weeks, two weeks of daily weigh-ins and cake house. So that means all they need to do is track their food and track their body weight. And then you're going to get seven day averages for each one of those weeks. This way you can determine the amount of weight gained, maintained or lost. And then you can see the relationship with food. Now, if you remember roughly 3,500 calories is equal to about a pound of body fat being lost. We can use this as a rough estimation. That's certainly more accurate than just using an equation. Now, a 500 calorie surplus per day will produce roughly a pound of weight gained per week or about a half a kilogram. That means a 1,000 calorie surplus per day will produce about a kilogram of, of, of weight gain. Likewise, a 1,000 calorie deficit per day will produce about a one kilogram loss of body weight. So we can look at the change in body weight in week one on average compared to week two on average and look at the calories on average in both weeks and then get a relationship. Let's talk about what that would look like. Let's say we had that same 92 kilo to kilogram individual and they tracked their first week and on average their body weight was about 92.1 and they consumed just under 3,300 calories. In week two, they also consumed about 3,300 calories. However, their body weight dropped about 200 grams. Now we can see that they lost a slight amount of weight, which means 3,300 calories is probably just below maintenance, but how much? 
An easy way to do this is to use that relationship of 1,000 calorie surplus per day would equal a one kilogram gain per week. So we just take 1,000 calories, multiply it by 0.2, the change in body weight, and we see that on a daily basis, they were in a, roughly a 200 calories deficit. Therefore, you can start that person off on roughly 3,500 calories if you want them to maintain.